Hey there, Chad here with another Kerbal Space Program episode. In our previous episode, we launched our first rocket. We collected a few science points. In this episode, we're going to spend those science points and see what else we can do next. Science is spent in the research and development facility, so I'm going to click on that and it will load up our tech tree. Right now, the only thing that we have is the starting setup, which gives us just a couple of components to work with. Now we have 19 and a half science points to spend. The next level of items costs five points each to purchase. So that'll be 10 points to move to the, to the next stage of these. You notice there's a number in a circle here, three. That indicates there are three components that are added when we select this. So I'm going to select it, click on the research button here, which will then allow me to utilize that. And you'll notice it further increases the tree for me. I'm going to oh, go ahead and select this one too, engineering. This gives us a separator or decoupler, gives us a science experiment to work with so we can start gathering science a little more quickly. We do get an antenna with this one and we get a second antenna. We will research that. That leaves us with nine and a half points, which is not enough to unlock any of these. That one's 20, this one's 18, this one's 15. So we will need to gather more science and become a little more diligent in our efforts there moving forward. If you took a look at that tech tree, you may notice that the items as you move right start to cost more and more to unlock. Some of them cost hundreds of points to unlock. And all we've seen so far are experiments that give one or two points at a time. That seems like it's going to take forever to unlock those. First of all, there's hope. Experiments get different amounts of data and science so that it scales a little bit better than you might think. But also having an understanding of how the system actually works will probably be helpful. So I'm going to take just a moment to explain the biomes and the situations in the game. A science experiment is conducted in a biome, and a biome is something like the ocean on Kerbin or the shores here, mountains, there's highlands in certain places, there's a tundra. Those are all biomes, and every biome can have many of the different experiments executed against it. So like the temperature experiment we just unlocked, we will be able to perform that in the water, in the ocean, get points there, on the shore, get points there. In the mountains, get points there. On the tundra, get points there. We'll be able to do that with most of the experiments. There are some experiments that only work in certain biomes and in certain situations. So the biomes are, are what you probably think they are from other games. They're the areas of ecology that are similar. Quick uh, pro tip though, there are several biomes on our screen right now. Now, of course, there's probably some mountains over here or maybe some woodlands or something. This is the shores, this is the ocean. But each of these is a biome as well. The runway is a biome, the launch pad, the catwalk here is actually a biome even though it doesn't highlight because we can't click on it. Tracking station, research and development, the vehicle assembly building, the space plane hangar, even the flagpole is a biome. So we are able to run experiments in each of these, the same experiments, and, and gather points for them. So you, there's a ton of science points that can be gathered just right here in this screen alone with a rover once we have the ability to build one of those. We don't have to go far to start collecting a lot of science. Also, there are a few experiments that are made available to us very early. The second part of how science works has to do with situation. And in the game, there are six different situations those situations are splashed down, that's in contact with water, basically. Landed, which is when you're touching the surface of something. Flying low over, flying high over, in space low over, and in space high over. So there are six different situations. Now I believe no more than five can apply because splashed down and landed uh, can never occur in the same biome. But each of those situations in a particular biome can also have a particular experiment run in it. Again, some experiments, that won't make sense. There's like a seismic experiment eventually. Well, that only works if you're on the ground. It doesn't work for all the other situations, but landed, it'll work for that one. Also, each of the bodies in the game, so the moon, Minmus, Duna, and Eve nearby and their moons, they all have biomes as well. Kerbin has 11 biomes plus all of the Space Center biomes. 
The moon has 17 biomes. Minmus has several biomes as well. And as you move to the planets, they'll each have a collection. Jewel, the Jupiter analog, is a gas planet. It does not have a surface. So there are several experiments you will never be able to perform in a landed perspective near Jewel. Now that you know a little bit more about how science works, let's see if we can grab a few more low-hanging science points real quick. First, let's go to Mission Control, though, and see what new contracts are out here. And there clearly are several new ones here. These observational surveys, these can be kind of difficult. They require you to be in a specific situation, flying below 18,000 meters, in a specific location. And I'll show you how that's done, but let's skip those for now. Let's go down to, I think Escape the Atmosphere is a good one for us to aim for. I don't know that we'll do that on this particular flight, but that's a good one. And here's another really good one. Test the flea solid rocket booster at the launch site. This is a relatively simple one to complete. It literally requires that we have the flea, that we be on Kerbin, and we be on the launch site. And just doing that will complete this contract. So that's that's a real simple one to, to do. Let's grab that. Of course, our, our main goal for this particular series of launches is to get to where we can go into orbit. Okay, we do not want to decline the contract. I almost clicked that to exit. We want to click leave facility and we'll go into the vehicle assembly building. So twofold here, we want to gather a few science points and we want to test the flea rocket. So we'll put a capsule out there. We will put a parachute on it so that Jeb can return safely. We'll put the flea rocket on it. And then we're going to add a couple of science experiments. Now, one thing to know is rocket flight requires symmetry. And if I were to just drop this guy on here, I would probably want to put another one over here to balance it out, to keep it symmetrical. And that could be really complicated to try to figure out exactly where I had dropped the other one. There's a tool here though that allows us to do that really easy. If I press, if you look down here in the corner, there's this cycle symmetry. If I press X, you'll notice that this goes from a dot, which stands for single, to the symbol there that you see, which tells me that there are now two loaded. So if I drop this here, you'll notice that it symmetrically loads this wherever I put it. Now, it would be nice to be able to put it down here on the engine, but if the engine doesn't survive, these won't come back with us. I probably should go ahead and demonstrate a separation here. I don't think we did that. So we're gonna go and add a coupler in here, our decoupler. We'll put that there and what that does is it stages the rocket so we'll have a little bit different configuration here we do need to pay attention to this this configuration is not good so we want our lowest stage to be the engine itself and then the separation and then the parachute at the top so now we have three stages that we'll execute the first one will be the engine at some point we will execute separation with the decoupler and then on returning towards the ground we will execute the parachute so back to science, if we put these here, you'll notice there are two of them still. It, it's held onto that setting for us. Also, as you hit X more times, I think you go up to eight is what you can max out at. We'll go back to one and then back to two. So we have two right now. If we put this here, when we separate, these will fall to the ground and will be destroyed and the experiment will not return with Jeb. So we have to put them on the capsule itself. So let's put them there. And again, they're symmetrical now, so that's good. And then we're going to use the thermometer. And one thing we want to be sure not to do is to block the hatch. So let's put the thermometer next to the hatch right here. And again, it, it put a second one over here for us. That should do it. That'll get us a couple of experiments potentially. Let's go ahead and go launch this. We have two of the goo experiments and two of the thermometer experiments. While we're sitting right here on the pad, we're going to go ahead and execute one of the goo, goo experiments and we will collect it. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of space here. What that indicates is we can actually run the experiment more than once in this location and still get some return. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. 
you'll notice this will stay open. We can also run the thermometer from here, lock the temperature. We'll get 2.4 points for that. And if we try the crew report, we will see we don't get any points because we ran the crew report in our first launch. We will recycle that one. So let's go ahead and launch this. However, I'm going to leave these windows open. This looks a little confusing. Oh, you can only do one at a time. You have to hit the thumbtack to leave them. And the crew report will be the third one. And I forgot to hit the thumbtack. All right, so we have a temperature experiment, a goo experiment, and a crew report. And we're going to try to grab those in another situation, specifically flying over Kerbin. So we'll turn on our light, turn on stabilization. Since Jed is in there, we don't have to increase throttle, but we will. And we're going to go ahead and launch. I want to kind of aim for the ocean a little bit. I'm going to hit log. Notice it says while flying over Kerbin Shores, the goo flying at Kerbin, and then crew report from Jeb. We can close these down now, and we'll just let this flight finish. I'm going to go ahead and do the next separation. So there was a little explosive charge, which is what kind of pushed that back. So he's moving up slower. It's not so much that he's falling away from us now. It's just relative. I'm going to speed up time. That's not something we've done yet. While you're in atmosphere, you can speed time up to four times. The comma and period are used to move up and down, and then the forward slash is used to return to normal time. And we're now in our our downward path. I'm going to go ahead and return to normal time. Time warp will show up here. In space, you can go quite a bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and open the chute. We can turn off SAS now. You can just fall back to the planet. In space, time can be accelerated up to, I believe, 10,000 times. It might be more than that. I don't think I found a use for above that. The way the engine works is it does time slices of the physics, so it isn't calculating everything every second. Instead, it's calculating every 10,000 second, perhaps. What that can lead to is clipping issues where a spacecraft can move right through a planet because the time slices didn't have it in contact with the planet. So it isn't something you want to do long term for flights that you're actually manning. For flights that are just out there and doing their thing, you can you can use time acceleration all you want, but you do need to pay attention to where you're going and, and what's what's happening. You will see some weird behaviors if you do things like that. Accelerate to maximum time as you're coming into uh, <laughs> back to Kerbin from the moon or something. All right, another good time to use time acceleration is while we are returning to the planet. Now, when you use time acceleration the first time, it will give you a warning message that says, hey, are you sure you want to do this? What it's warning you is that larger objects can kind of, they can flux and, and sometimes they'll fall apart. I actually have never experienced that myself, but to be safe, right before I get to the water or to the ground when I'm doing something, I'll usually return to normal time just, just to be certain nothing weird is going to happen. Now, if we had put a third experiment on here, we would actually be able to run these again in the water. I didn't think to do that. Uh, my bad, we should have done that, but there is one more experiment we can do. Jeb is able to get out of the capsule. So we're going to have him go out EVA. EVA is extravehicular activity is what it stands for. And he is now outside the capsule. And if we right click on him, we have an EVA report. And we'll grab that and it's worth three points here and it is from Kerbin's water. We could also do this on the launch pad. Uh, Jeb can get down and walk around and he can do it from other local biomes as well, like the catwalk. Of course, he can only hold on to one experiment at a time. So you, you can't keep doing EVAs and, and getting the science for it over and over. Unfortunately, it's different miss missions each time. We will keep that experiment. We'll close this up. 
put Jeb back in the capsule and the helicopter will come and get him and return him. Our results screen shows that we gathered 25 science that time, so that's that's a good mark in the right direction. We didn't uh, really accomplish anything significant to give us huge jumps in our money, but we did complete a contract. We'll, let's finish this first. Jeb uh, did not gain any experience. We'll see about doing that on the next launch. The contract, we gained $4,500 one science point and one reputation. We also had a few more milestones. Uh, the first EVA performed for 3,200. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so that is some early science. We will call this uh, episode done. We will move on to the next episode where we will follow up with spending those points and getting to where we leave the atmosphere. Until then, fair travels.